<laughs> no family does satire quite like The Simpsons. The next day, brothers, and I had truly done my best morning and afternoon to play it their way. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie parodies in The Simpsons. For this list, we're taking a look at the funniest film send-ups from this iconic animated sitcom. More weight has been given to the entries in which the majority of an episode's plot parodies a movie. But we're including those that just parody scenes, too. We've excluded musical parodies because that's a list for another day. Number 10, 2001, A Space Odyssey. I'm afraid I can't let you do this, Red. The risk is unacceptable. The Simpsons has poked fun at 2001 on multiple occasions, referencing HAL 9000, The Stargate, and The Star Child. <laughs> This season three episode most notably paid homage to the film's Dawn of Man scene, as a man-ape version of Homer discovers the black monolith. Marking a significant turning point in human evolution, the other man-apes begin to discover tools. Homer, however, merely discovers a new napping spot. Despite being a dream sequence, this parody sums up Homer Simpson in a nutshell. He's a primitive creature who will never fully evolve. Based on the way he sleeps, Homer could very well be the missing link between man and ape. Dad, I'm calling about the school talent show. Don't worry, I know it's tonight. Number 9. Alien Good lord, it's coming up right behind him. Much like the previous entry, The Simpsons has referenced the Alien franchise multiple times. Santa's little helper assumes the role of the alien here, causing mass hysteria upon breaking into Springfield Elementary School's air ducts. It's up to groundskeeper Willie to save the day, while Principal Skinner monitors their activity via scanner. The visuals and music wonderfully mimic the claustrophobic suspense from Ridley Scott's original film. Dallas, are you sure there is no sign of it? I mean, it is there. Gotta be around there. Of course, Bart's lovable mutt isn't nearly as threatening as a xenomorph. So the greased Scotsman fortunately doesn't meet the same grim fate as Dallas. <laughs> Dallas? Superintendent Chalmers really should have made way for Willie, though. Make way for Willie! <laughs> Number 8. The Great Escape. Don't like to nap, eh? We have a place for babies like you. The box! Ayn Rand's School for Tots is comparable to a POW camp for little Maggie and her fellow babies. After the firm daycare owner takes away her beloved pacifier, Maggie looks to the great escape for inspiration. Being a natural-born leader, the youngest Simpson rallies her fellow babies to reclaim their pacifiers. A failed attempt lands Maggie in the box, which is the playpen equivalent of the cooler from the World War II flick. And now go away from here. If you steal tools, cooler. Like Steve McQueen's Cooler King, she at least has a ball to bounce against the wall. This parody wouldn't be complete without composer Elmer Bernstein's march theme from the 1963 film. The music makes Maggie's antics all the more exciting and triumphant. Especially when she finally snatches the keys to liberation. Maggie, time to go to the... <coughs> Number 7. Pulp Fiction Well, at McDonald's you can buy a Krusty Burger with cheese, right? But they don't call it a Krusty Burger with cheese. Get out! Well, why do they call it? In the vein of what's arguably Quentin Tarantino's magnum opus, this classic episode tells several short stories that occasionally intertwine. And what do they call it? They call it uh, Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. The episode literally turns into a Pulp Fiction parody following a conversation about fast food items. Quarter pounder with cheese? Well, I can picture the cheese, but, uh... Chief Wiggum is still hungry after consuming his crusty burger with cheese and crusty, partially gelatinated, non-dairy gum-based beverage, prompting him to get some donuts. Well, I know what I'm getting. Some donuts. Uh, uh, help me out of the booth, boys. Matters take an unexpected turn when Jailbird Snake crashes into the bumbling police chief. Hold it right there. Like Butch and Marcellus Wallace, both men wind up at the mercy of a shady store owner. Before Zed can show up, however, the last person you'd expect comes to the rescue. 
Hey, Dad, can we get this, please? Way to get medieval on him, Millhouse. I ain't through with you by oh. damn sight. I'm gonna get medieval on your ass. Number six, Citizen Kane. I want my Eddie. Charles Foster Kane and Charles Montgomery Burns have a great deal in common. Oh, oh. <sighs> Oh, it's you. Aside from being incredibly wealthy and sharing the same first name, both men were deprived of a proper childhood. Be careful, Charles. Okay. Pull your muffler around your neck, Charles. Okay, nice. Instead of a sled called Rosebud, Mr. Burns' loss of childhood innocence is epitomized through a teddy bear named Bobo. Realizing how empty he is inside, Burns sets out to reclaim his long-lost teddy, which has come into Maggie's possession. Maggie, I'm trying to watch TV. Put that moldy old bear down. In addition to being a funny parody, this episode also encompasses the same poignant moral behind Citizen Kane. All the money and power in the world can't buy everything. Just money doesn't mean anything. Once Mr. Burns learns this valuable lesson, he's finally reunited with his beloved bear. Temporarily, anyway. My beautiful Bobo. I promise I'll never leave you behind again. Number 5. Terminator 2 Judgment Day Hey, what's up for today, Nettie? After years of loving thy neighbor, Ned Flanders finally wins over Homer Simpson. Ned's friendly nature blows up in his face, however, as Homer gets too close for comfort. Oh, okay. When it comes to spending time with his new best buddy, Homer is even more determined and unyielding than the T-1000. The Flanders family eventually makes a break for it, but that doesn't stop the oblivious Homer from pursuing them. Nettie? Nettie! With a couple of golf clubs substituting for liquid metal arms, he latches onto their car in the midst of a high-speed chase. <laughs> this Terminator 2 reference goes by so quickly that you might not catch it at first. But that's part of what makes it such a brilliant parody, though. <laughs> I guess he didn't see me. We did it! Number 4. Goldfinger Ingenious, isn't it, Mr. Bunt? Hank Scorpio might be the nicest boss Homer's ever had, but that doesn't excuse the fact that he's trying to conquer the East Coast with a doomsday device. This is Scorpio. I have the doomsday device. You have 72 hours to deliver the gold, or you face the consequences. Since Scorpio is essentially a Bond baddie, it's only fitting that he has a nemesis named Mr. Bont. Taking a page from Goldfinger, Scorpio attempts to kill his arch enemy with a laser. Scorpio, you're totally mad. <laughs> I wouldn't point fingers, you jerk. Mr. Bont naturally has a trick up his sleeve, liberating himself from his restraints with a coin. <laughs> <laughs> Hilariously unaware that he's working for a supervillain, Homer leaps into action and tackles the secret agent. Nice work, Homer! Am I proud of you? Rather than wasting time with another death trap, Scorpio has his guards finish the job on the spot. Mr. Bond won't return. Thank you. Number 3. Raiders of the Lost Ark No time to argue. Throw me the idol. I throw you the whip. Much like the opening to Indy's debut adventure, this parody slowly builds tension as Bart retrieves Homer's jar of change. Then, when trouble surfaces, it's nothing but fast-paced action throughout. Are you little? The Simpson household suddenly stands in for an ancient temple, with Homer acting as a giant boulder, Maggie firing darts, and the closing garage door nearly trapping our hero. In true Indiana Jones fashion, Bart narrowly escapes with both the treasure and his lucky hat. <laughs> John Williams' unforgettable musical score is the cherry on top of this priceless scene, which manages to be exhilarating, inventive, and hysterical all at once. Number 2. Cape Fear <laughs> oh, That man is so rude! Yeah. This entire episode is a lampoon of Cape Fear and its 1991 remake. <laughs> both of which center on a convicted criminal who stalks a family after being released from prison. Looking to get even with Bart once and for all, a tattoo-riddled sideshow Bob begins to channel Max Cady. <laughs> oh, really? Now that's too much. Ah, sideshow Bob! He confronts the Simpson family in a movie theater and hitches a ride under their car. I love these speed bumps. Oh, oh. 
Bob and Max also notably share the same theme music by composer Bernard Herrmann. Even if you're not familiar with Cape Fear, this Simpsons episode will still have you laughing every minute. Hello, Mr. Thompson. I think he's talking to you. With clever writing, side-splitting slapstick, timeless characters, and a killer musical number, it works as both an ingenious satire and a standalone comedy classic. Surely there's no harm in laying in the middle of a public street. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number one, The Shining. Homie? Hmm. What he's typed will be a window into his madness. The annual Treehouse of Horror special always makes leeway for plenty of spooky satire. Well, third, usually the blood gets off at the second floor. If we had to single out one segment as the absolute best, though, it would have to be this send up of Stanley Kubrick's psychological horror tour de force. Here's Johnny! <laughs> Upon being hired as winter caretakers of Mr. Burns Mountain Lodge, Bart discovers that he possesses a power known as the Shining. Uh, we mean Shining. You read my thoughts. You've got the Shining. You mean Shining. Shh. You want to get sued? Meanwhile, the lack of TV and beer make Homer a dull boy. In other words, he goes crazy. Go crazy? Don't mind if I do! <laughs> this segment has one great reference after another. From the blood in the elevator, to the creepy twins in the hallway, to the immortal line. Here's Johnny. Here's Johnny! Don't! With every passing second, the urge to laugh just keeps rising. <laughs> Dirty cat. Yeah. Ah! Do you agree with our list? Stole made up, what's the difference? What's your favorite film parody in The Simpsons? Ah! 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 For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Ah!